New Year's resolution. I'd ask you to join me in this one. How would you like to conquer the fear of death? Hmm, probably hadn't thought about that one yet, right? That's what I want to talk about today. Jesus said, perfect love cast out all fear. So I want to look at three things. I want to look at why do humans fear death, how humans handle that fear, and how to live fearlessly. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. It says, since the children share in flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity that by his death he might break the power of death that is the devil that has led people by fear into slavery all of their lives. People live all of their lives fearing death. But Jesus on the cross said what? It is finished. Why do we fear death? It's natural because Adam and Eve had a choice in the garden and Adam and Eve could choose to be their own God or they could choose to walk by faith. See, if you read the first couple of chapters of Genesis, what do you see? You see this picture that God gives us of a man and a woman naked, without fear, without shame, with union and communion with God and living a good life. And then God gave them an opportunity because of free will. Satan said, surely you won't die. They ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. What's that mean? That means that, see, they chose to eat that they could choose. See, I'm going to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I will decide what's right and wrong. I can make those decisions for myself. They chose to be their own God. And so God told them in advance, just like you tell your children or your grandchildren, if you do this, this is going to happen to you. Here's the consequence. If you take that drink here and you spill it on the carpet, you know, grandma and grandpa are not going to be happy and you might have to sit in time out. There was a consequence, just God said, if you do it, you're going to die. Physical death and spiritual death entered into the world which had never been there before, and we were never created to die in the beginning. That's why God put an angel, when he moved Adam and Eve out of the garden, God put an angel at the entrance of the garden so they could not come back in and eat from the tree of life, which meant I'll eternally be separated from God forever. Jesus had to come. Jesus had to pay the price. So, We fear death because it's a natural consequence of our choices to be our own God. I remember as a young boy, I didn't know a whole lot about church. I sat in Sunday school and chewed gum and I got it on my fingers. Got in trouble when I got to the... I was Baptist. Oh, when you you went to Sunday school and then you went in and heard the preacher. And you know, when gum got on your fingers and you couldn't shake the preacher's hand, you got a whooping with the belt when you got home. See, we have consequences and I knew that I needed this. I I knew, I didn't know how I knew. I knew I needed a savior. I knew I didn't do things right. But my plan from eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was I'm going to do what I want to do until I get old. And then when I get old, I don't want to go to hell. So I'm going to accept Jesus. True story. I lived it for 34 years of my life. Why, how do people handle this fear that comes as a natural consequence? Typically, we'll do one of three things. Number one, we will avoid it. We've all probably done one or all of these. Uh, No, I don't want to go to the hospital, honey. 
I don't want to go up in that hospital room. Ooh. You know, ooh, there's a smell when you go to hospitals. Uh, I don't want to go to the funeral. That's too near death. I only go to the funeral if it, you know, someone really close to my family's died. I don't want to get that close to death. I got to avoid this thing. Or if we start talking about it in a conversation, you'll probably bug out real fast. So we avoid it. Some of us simply deny it. I believe in reincarnation. See, I'm going to choose to believe because I have free will. I'm going to choose to believe in reincarnation. That way I'll just keep coming back till things work themselves out. See, I, I, I uh, deny that finality. Or I'll believe in purgatory. Purgatory is taught that once you die, you go to this place that's called purgatory, and if it, when enough merits have been added to your account, and enough prayers, this is true, this has been taught in the church for thousands of years, that enough prayers and enough merits have been given on my account, then I'll be released into heaven. Or, I'm an atheist. Don't you talk to, don't, shh, I don't want to hear about your God. I don't want to hear about any God. See, I got, to I got to deny this stuff. I can't face this stuff. But you know what the consequence is? Or excuse me, then we resist it. So we avoid it, we deny it, or we resist it. And how do we resist it? <laughs> I got to jog five more miles today. <laughs> Where's that health food? I got to eat every vegetable. Every vegetable. Oh, I got to have 10 vitamins. Where's all my vitamins? Where's all my vitamins? If I got to eat my vitamins, I got, oh, I got to jog some more. I'm going to die. i got to get every last inch of this life out. I, I, if I can live one more day. Over-exaggeration. But some people inward do that. The consequence of all of this is this. Look on the screen. Revelation. The revealing of the end of this church age, of the age of humanity. God said this. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. See, death and Hades are a thing that will end. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. See, we're all going to die once physically. The second death, which that scripture is referring to, is eternal separation from God forever. And the Bible describes it as a metaphorically a lake of fire. What's the worst nightmare you've ever had? Think about it. What's the worst dream you've ever had? And you wake up and you go, I'm so glad I'm not there. Well, imagine living in that nightmare for eternity. That's what the Bible describes hell as. Why do we fear death? How do we handle the fear? And finally, I want us to talk in closing about how to conquer the fear of death. And how we do that is two ways. Number one, we're going to stand up. We're going to face the truth because we know that Jesus has conquered death. So we're going to stand here. We're going to say, let's talk about physical death. Yes, we know that our mortal bodies will die. God did not take away that consequence of our sin. But you know what, brothers and sisters? You're not your physical body. You're a spirit. You're a spirit being. Have you ever seen someone alive and then seen them laying in a casket? What's the difference? Their spirit's gone. Immediate, the immediate second that the physical body wears out, your spirit, who you are, is released. And you will live forever whether you believe in Jesus Christ or you do not believe in Jesus Christ. Because you are a spirit being created in God's image and God is without beginning and God is without end. You'll never die as a spirit. The difference is, where will you spend 
eternity? Or where will you spend all of the time that's left over, which is forever, after your physical body wears out? That's the question. But the Bible says this. That the little bit of suffering, Romans 8, 18, that we go through in our physical bodies is not going to be compared to the glory that we're going to have in eternal life. There's no comparison whatsoever. Think about Jesus Christ. Jesus came and knew that Jesus was going to live 33 years Knew Jesus, he, Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross. He knew he was going to suffer rods, torture, blood, beatings. He knew it. But Jesus knew that he knew that he knew that what was coming was worth it. So the little bit of physical pain that you and I might endure during our mortal time on earth is nothing. I want to explain it to you like this. Remember when you took your child or your grandchild to get a shot at the doctor's office, a booster or something, right? Were they scared to death when they saw that needle if the doctor couldn't hide it well enough? Well, they're scared to death. They're crying. Ah! You're just sitting there. It's going to be all right. Jeez, oh, Maisel, it's just going to last for three seconds. Boing. Ah! And then what? Everything's fine. See, that's what it's like in our physical bodies. God sits back from heaven and goes, oh, it's going to be okay. This is just a little thing. Just a bitty little thing. And you'll never see yourself, your physical body die anyways. You'll never see. I might see you. You might see me, but you can't see yourself. And, you know, we've got so many drugs today. Wow, you, know, you can't be in a whole lot of pain, can you? So, number one, physical death is just temporary. It's an easy thing. Jesus did it. We can do it. God promises, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's going to happen. It's going to be over. Secondly, spiritual death. Spiritual death is the second death in the Bible. It's called the lake of fire. It's called hell. It's called eternal separation from God. But Jesus came to break the power of death, as we said in our scripture, and Jesus came and paid the penalty. Your penalty was eternal separation. Jesus came in the flesh. See, the children were flesh and blood. He came to share in their humanity because as a human being, my penalty cannot be paid by nothing other than a human being. So Jesus came, paid that penalty, while ye were yet sinners, Christ died for you. See, Christ died for us, brothers and sisters, before we were ever born. You with me? Psalms 139 says, I saw you when you were in the deep, in your unformed, in, before even being in the womb. You're a spirit being. But this is how you overcome. 1 John 5, 5. 1 John 5, 5 says this. Who is he that overcomes the world. And when it talks about the world, it's talking about death, sickness, pain, sin, and sorrow. Who is it? Who's he? Who is it that's going to overcome this world, this fallen world? He that believes that Jesus is the Christ. See, that's why the Bible calls us overcomers. Because the insta-second that you or I accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, some of us remember it, some of us don't. When that second happened, that second, it was, there was an exchange takes place. Christ's death on the cross, the penalty for my sin was paid by Christ, and Christ's righteousness was imputed into my account. My book of life was opened, and the name was written. My sins are forgiven before, now, and forever, I'm in the Lamb's book of life. And this is the scripture I hope you remember. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, the insta-second, that you believed, 
you were marked with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. See, you can't see that seal, but God and all of heaven can. When you believed and you accepted Christ, there was a mark put on you spiritually, and you're God's child forever. And nothing can break God's seal. So there's no reason to ever fear death again. Listen to this clip. I instantly fell to my knees in front of him. And I knew that I was falling in the presence of God. Crystal McVeigh wasn't having a dream. She had died and says she woke up in heaven. And it was this God that I had run from my whole life. Her journey away from him began when she was molested at three years old. I grew up believing that I was disgusting and broken and filthy. Crystal went to church with her mother. When she was eight, she accepted Christ and was baptized. She hoped that would cleanse her from the guilt and shame of being molested. But the abuse continued until she was 12 years old. I decided that there were two options. Either one, there was a God and he didn't love me for whatever reason because he hadn't stopped the things that had happened in my life. He hadn't saved me. Or two, there was no God. In her teen years, Crystal started using drugs and alcohol and was promiscuous. By the time she was 21, Crystal was a divorced mother with two children. Finally, at 28, she settled down and married Virgil and they had twins. 10 months later in December 2009, doctors performed a routine procedure that triggered pancreatitis. She had complications and ended up with a 110 degree fever. Her mother, Bonnie, came to the hospital. She didn't look right. She looked swollen to me. They had uh, put her on a pain pump. I felt very calm and very peaceful. And I remember opening my eyes and seeing my mom sit at the chair at the foot of my bed. And I told her that I loved her. She felt cold. And when I looked up, her lips were blue. And she wasn't breathing. And I turned around and her face was black. And I just started screaming, she's dead, she's dead. The nurse told me, she said, you need to leave, you need to, and I told her, I'm not going anywhere. Code blue, we need the crash card in here, quick. For the next nine minutes, doctors and nurses tried to resuscitate Crystal. About that time, Crystal's husband, Virgil, arrived. Everything went through my mind. I didn't know if she was alive, I didn't know if she was dead. I know why they didn't want me in there, it's violent. And so her nine minutes in heaven were my nine minutes in hell. While the team worked to revive her, Crystal says she was in heaven. The first thing I remember becoming aware of was that I was still me. And I was still the me who had just told my mother that I loved her and died. And I was very aware of the fact that I had just died. But I was also the me that had existed from the moment that God had created me. The light came to me as if I was in the middle of the tunnel, yet it went on for eternity. So how do we conquer death? Our New Year's resolution is this. Number one, physical death you'll never see because you're a spirit being and the pain that you might have in this body is not worth comparing to the glory we can face that number two if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior you'll never see the second death you'll never see the lake of fire and you will be loved and you will be with Christ now and forever. But as you know, as we live in these mortal bodies, sometimes this fear wants to creep in on us, right? Have this thought or this thought and we have to work. So this is what I want you to have. First John chapter 4 verse 18 says this. Jesus says, perfect love 
cast out all fear. What's that mean? That you can know that Jesus loves you so perfectly and has died for you and everything is so complete and Jesus will always be there for you. Jesus' perfect love will cast out the fear. So my encouragement to you is this. Whenever you feel, feel that fear creeping in on you, I want you to speak forth out of your mouth. Jesus says, perfect love cast out all fear. And when you speak God's word, the light of Christ comes and the darkness must be gone. Christ did it. It's ours. Let's pray. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. And you, right now, can conquer the fear of the death of the second death. Just pray this with me. Jesus, I have feared death all my life. I don't want to go to hell and I'm tired of being my own God. Right now I give my entire life to you. I give up and I accept you not only as my Lord but also as my Savior. Forgive me. I accept your son's death on the cross for 100% payment of every sin I've ever committed or will ever commit. Come in and live in me, Holy Spirit, so I can be born again and sealed with the mark of the Holy Spirit. If there's any of us in here today that have any other fears, I would like to pray for you. And Lord Jesus, I pray for anyone in here that is living in 2015 with the spirit of fear I come and I speak your word that you are perfect love and I bind that fear and I break the bondage and the chains of that fear in their hearts and their minds and I release your light and your love your healing and your power your wonders and your miracles into their lives may they feel free may they feel the chains of fear and bondage broken. May they know that you're, they're your child and that they're free forever. I want to give you now just a, a few seconds of silence that you may speak to God on your own behalf. Jesus, hear our prayers. Amen. Uh...